Welcome to the first day of this symposium on artificial intelligence in celebration of the 20th anniversary of the MIT France Seed Fund program. My name is Vire Guyader. I'm the Counselor for Science and Technology at the Embassy of France in Washington, D.C., and it's a pleasure to be with you today. We are very honored and privileged to welcome this morning French Minister Jean-Noël Barrault, in charge of the digital transition and telecommunications, who wishes to say a few words. So without further ado, Mr. Barrault, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. I'd like to, being, uh, to begin by saying how pleased I am to be here with you today for the 20th anniversary of the MIT France Seed Fund. After four or five years as a professor at the Sloan School of Management in Boston, I'm very happy to welcome you, dear President Reif, dear researchers here today at the Collège de France. It is a great source of pride to have you among us. If uh, AI has foundations in several computer science and uh, mathematical disciplines, it is now infusing all disciplines, life science, climate science, social science, among others. Conversely, AI must be permeable to research in sociology, philosophy, and ethics. The rise of artificial intelligence since the 2010s, linked in particular to technological breakthroughs in deep learning, means that this family of technologies can now be described as being of general use. For example, AI will exceed 20% of total VC investment in OECD countries in 2021. The number of AI patent filings has increased 30-fold in six years, reaching over 140,000 in 2021. Growth economists see AI as one of the key technologies of a new industrial revolution, the fourth. So we cannot treat AI with a small focus in research and in higher education. In France, as in the US, we've been able to bring out outstanding researchers who have contributed to the development of AI well beyond our borders. Yet, we must now scale up and train a new generation of researchers engineers and technicians who are capable of bringing into existence all the innovative applications that AI allows. In this respect, MIT is exemplary. And now that we know that MIT was inspired by Ecole Polytechnique, we have uh, even more reasons to, uh, to say so. With the creation in 2018 of the Schwarzman College in Computing, it is helping to develop research and teaching in transdisciplinary manner developing new programs that blend computer science with other disciplines. We share the ambition of MIT and the Schwarzman College to train bilingual students combining a mastery of AI with expertise in their field of study. The development of AI excellence trainings that will enable us to respond to the accelerating needs of companies in AI is also a key axis of the second phase of the national strategy. Thus, in November 2021, the government announced a 700 million euro package dedicated to supporting AI training in France. This support allows the funding of all types of degrees in order to meet the growing demand. Courses for engineers specialized in data science, shorter courses for technicians specialized in data analysis and processing, so-called AI plus X courses to train our students in fields such as biology, physics, but also law, and human and social sciences and continuous trainings built in response to the needs of businesses. Apart from training, these two days are dedicated to research. The research that you have been developing at MIT for many years and the research that we are carrying out here. I'd like to congratulate the organizers of this symposium. The topics that will be addressed today and tomorrow, health, climate change, data protection, ethics, seem to me both crucial for the development of AI and for its adoption in France as in the US. Through its national strategy, France intends to position itself as a leading country in Europe in the development of this technology. This is why it is preparing to deploy a major support mechanism for fundamental AI research on fundamental themes such as embedded AI and research on new advanced hardware arch architectures, distributed AI, 
trusted AI, and frugal AI, in particular through research on new algorithms that require little data. After a crazy decades of progress in AI, we still have to create the trust mechanisms that will guarantee a reliable and controlled development of AI systems. The mastery of these technologies in their technical, ethical, and even legal dimensions is crucial. Trustworthy AI, which refers to the ethical considerations, the regulatory approach, and the construction of good practices is at the heart of the French AI strategy. We see trust as the foundation of the economic dynamism of AI. France has indeed taken the measure of this subject in 2019 with the launch of a disruptive innovation project, bringing together some 40 industrial partners, major groups, startups, and academics, with a view to consolidating a chain of tools that will make it possible to verify that AI systems comply with the requirements of robustness and security, but also with a set of ethical requirements. This is now a more important topic than ever, with the definition of a European legislative framework on the supervision of high-risk AI applications on the one hand, and reflections on voluntary frameworks on the other hand. MIT is involved in several initiatives in this direction, collaborating with industry to draw up a set of principles and know-how, enabling the use of AI systems for high-risk applications. The AI Policy Forum, organized by the MIT Schwarzman College of Computing, plays a key role in the collaboration between public policymakers, academia, and industry worldwide. It is not an easy task to create regulations on technologies like AI, which evolve so quickly. In addition to the development of high-level principles on fairness, transparency, privacy, it's also important to create the technical basis that will enable them to be put into practice. In this sense, it is crucial to share our views, our research, and to coordinate our approaches in order to work towards a coherent, equivalent framework, and thus ensure that the actors in our two countries promote through the use of artificial intelligence the values that we jointly defend. I would therefore like to thank all the researchers present here for agreeing to come and share and develop a common reflection on these important issues. I would particularly like to salute Antoine Petit, president of the CNRS, François Jacques, president of the CEA, Bruno Portis, president of INRIA, and coordinator of the research program for, of the National Strategy for AI, as well as Renaud Vedel, who was until uh, I, I poached him the uh, national uh, coordinator or the coordinator for the, our national strategy for, for AI, and, and I thank Renaud for agreeing to join me as a, as a chief of staff. Um, INRIA, launched in 1967 at the instigation of General de Gaulle, is today a central link in France's digital development. In digital terms, MIT and INRIA have both been pioneers. If we go back to the creation of the web, both are founding members of the World Wide Web Consortium, first MIT in 1994, and then INRIA a few months later as the European representative. Like MIT, INRIA has also taken the turn in artificial intelligence. I'd like to remind you of one of its successes in the field of AI, the Psychic Learn Library, a machine learning toolbox that you all know. Now widely adopted internationally, it is one of the few programming frameworks that is not supported by a private digital player. By developing and making this framework open source and freely available, INRIA is promoting the dissemination of an open, collaborative tool that is of service for all. Today, INRIA, CNRS, and CEA are key players in our digital strategy, and in particular, are carrying out structuring projects for the development and dissemination of AI. And I'm delighted to see them present today in the context of this dialogue with MIT. I hope that this ongoing dialogue can be fruitful for defining a common path for research on AI, and that it can lead to structured cooperation on the definition of a framework for trustworthy AI, and can be a front runner of the dialogue between the US and Europe on the conditions to embrace and adopt a technology that conveys our common values. So have a wonderful two-day symposium, and thank you very much again for your invitation.
Thank you, Minister Barrow, for these uplifting remarks and for your presence today. It is an honor to have you join us as we celebrate the strong connections between France and MIT, especially around the topic as critical as artificial intelligence. For those who might not know it, strengthening scientific collaboration between France and the United States is one of the main missions of the Office for Science and Technology at the Embassy of France. The United States remains France's leading scientific partner, and France is the fifth largest partner in, of the United States behind China, England, Germany, and Canada. Our office is one of the five scientific networks that France has established in the world, and the most important in terms of its size and its geographical and thematic coverage. It is distributed in six consulates general, in Atlanta, in, in Boston, in Chicago, in Houston, in Los Angeles, and in San Francisco, and of course at the embassy in Washington, D.C. We, we are a team of 25 people, including university professors, research directors, or engineers, with a wide range of skills in many fields, health, information technology, agronomy, engineering sciences, sustainable development, climate, and innovation, to name a few. Whether it is by facilitating scientific collaboration or supporting transatlantic mobility, our team strives to offer our scientific communities the best cooperation framework. To achieve that, we run various types of programs, all of which serve the same purpose, creating opportunities for a fruitful collaboration. The MIT France Seed Fund Program is a great example of how we work with partner institutions in the US towards this goal. While we work on strengthening ties between US and French research communities, we also work to support internationalization of deep tech startups and bridge the gaps between science and public policy, as well as between science and diplomacy. Last December, we got together with our US counterparts from the research community and the federal government to set forth new priorities for our scientific bilateral cooperation. Emerging technologies, and more specifically artificial intelligence, was specifically designated as a priority. This two-day symposium is a very important step towards strengthening already existing collaborations between our two countries and fostering the emergence of new ones in this critical field. Before we begin our introductory talks, I would like to thank all the colleagues that helped and, and made this event possible. First, the administrator of the Collège de France for hosting this event in such a prestigious venue, Thomas Rummer, the Consul General of France in Boston, Arnaud Montreux, for his continuous support in this uh, action. <coughs> the MIT International Science and Technology Initiatives, with the help of April Julish Perez and Isabel Bittman, as well as the members of the MIT Endowment Advisory Board, Patrick Jaillet from the MIT, Isabel Erlin from INRIA, with the support of Claire Saint-Léger, the scientific office in Boston, Céline Duclos and Jean-Philippe Nicolai, our colleague from the French Ministry of Europe and Foreign Affairs, Madeleine Ozorovitz, our partners, Novaxia and the French American Foundation, and last but not least, all MIT laboratories who hosted French scientists and all the French universities, research laboratories and companies who partner with MIT France to host MIT faculty and students. To open this symposium, we'll be listening to distinguished leaders from highly ranked institutions and research organizations, both in the United States and in France. The first will be Raphael Reif, president of MIT. Then we will hear 
Bruno Sportis, chairman and CEO of the French National Institute for Research in Digital Science and Technology, INRIA. Antoine Petit, chairman and CEO of the French National Center for Scientific Research, CNRS. And Laurence Piketty, deputy general administrator of the French Alternative Energies and Atomic Energy Commission, CERA. And now, please join me in welcoming MIT President Raphael Reif. Good morning, thank you uh, for those kind words to start. For, uh, for many years, I opened events like this by saying how delighted I was to welcome everyone. And I always meant it. But after so much time apart, and so many meetings and conferences conducted with a computer screen between us, I must say that I truly, really mean it today. It's a privilege to be here with all of you this morning, to be here in person. This symposium is both a celebration of the past and an opportunity to envision the future. We're grateful to the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs and INRIA for their partnership in bringing all of us together. And with apologies to my MIT colleagues who know this story well, I hope you will forgive a very brief historical summary. Because I believe that to envision the future, it's important first to understand the past. For decades, colleges and universities in the US prided themselves on their study abroad programs. Students travel to other countries to learn the language, take a few classes, and experience the culture, maybe with the equivalent of a cafe au lait at a nice cafe on the left bank. There is nothing wrong with that. In fact, there is plenty of good with that. But at MIT, we think about these kinds of things a little differently. Our motto, as some of you know, is mens et manus, or mind and hand, which is how we approach education, learning by doing. The learning could be in the classroom, in the lab, or halfway around the world. In the early 1980s, MIT professor Dick Samuels saw how fluent visiting Japanese researchers were in English, and how vital they were to MIT's research initiatives. He also knew that, by and large, MIT students and faculty had neither the training nor the opportunity to make the same contributions in Japan. That realization gave him, to, gave him the spark he needed to start a program called MIT Japan, which sent students abroad to experience what it's like to work at a lab or a company in that country. In the process, Professor Samuels opened a door from our campus to the world a door Professor Susan Berger opened wider than anyone could have imagined. In 1994, Susan launched the MIT International Science and Technology Initiatives, also known by its initials, MISTI. A major milestone at MIT, and MIT has not been the same since. MISTI places our students in vibrant research and work settings around the world. Suzanne started with Japan and China, and a few years later expanded to Germany, India, and Israel. And in 2001, with thanks to a generous gift by the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs, MISTI launched the MIT France Seed Fund, the catalyst for the MIT France program. Over the last 20 years, the fund has provided more than $2 million to 142 research projects, connecting MIT faculty and scientists with their counterparts in France. These projects have produced high-quality published papers, enabled corporate partnerships, 
and drawn significant new funding. What's more, each grant brings together students from MIT and universities in France, building international bridges on the promise of discovery and the creation of knowledge. A café au lait at a charge being café in Paris, this is not. Although it doesn't exclude that either. The MIT France seed fund was only the start. In 2008, MIT launched a global seed fund, which to date has awarded $22 million to more than 1,000 research projects around the world. That is the impressive impact of MISTI. This morning, we celebrate 20 years of MIT Friends and the breathtaking impact of the MIT Friends Seed Fund. But we also celebrate MISTI's visionary founder, Suzanne Berger. Suzanne, look around what you have started. All of MIT, and I believe everyone in this room, is indebted to you for bringing MIT and the world closer together. So on behalf of MIT, I thank you for all you have done for MIT friends and for MIT. Now I must state the obvious. In a room full of experts on artificial intelligence, I am not one of them. But like all of you, I have a deep interest in how AI and other new technologies will influence our shared future. And the minister a few minutes ago couldn't have said it any better. In fact, as the MIT president, that is also in my job description. But my focus on computing, especially AI, took on a sense of urgency a few years ago. As the minister has said in conversations that I've had myself with colleagues from industry, academia, and government, it became clear that given the pervasiveness of AI in everything we do, preparing our nation and the world for the future would require bold action. If we want to make important strides in computing research and development, and if we want to make sure that this technology is developed and used in ways that serve our whole society, it will require bold action from industry, it will require bold sustained investment from government, and it will require bold initiatives from higher education. In effect, and especially as a leading technological institution, it became crystal clear that we must reshape ourselves to prepare our students to shape the future. And that is what we are doing at MIT. As the minister mentioned in 2018, we announced the MIT Schwarzman College of Computing, and with it, the most profound restructuring of the institute in nearly 70 years. Students have long told us, through the courses they choose, that computation is now as fundamental to them as math. It was clear from their choices that they want and need to be, as the minister said, bilingual. That is, as fluent in computing as they are in biology or urban planning or economics. And so we have rearranged the institute. We rearranged the institute to reflect that perspective and to accelerate that reality. For nearly four years now, the college has been working on delivering the power of AI tools to researchers in every field, on fostering breakthroughs, breakthroughs in computing and AI actively informed by the wisdom and needs of other disciplines, and at the same time, advancing the domain of computing and AI and educating the bilingual graduates that are needed to shape the future. And you will hear today and tomorrow from some of the faculty and students and scholars leading the way at MIT. In addition, the college also is doing something else, something I'm delighted you will address tomorrow. A defining challenge of our time is in making ethics and societal impact 
an integral, lasting focus of our work across sectors and across disciplines. For too long, questions about the impact and ethics of technology have been apologetic explorations of what went wrong, often long after the fact, if at all. Everyone here in this room knows that pushing the limits of new technologies can be thrilling, so thrilling that it's hard to think of negative consequences or of how a tool might be misused. But the fact is, technologies like AI can be so powerful that we cannot allow ourselves to be intoxicated. Yet there is no designated driver who can keep society safe on the road to the future. We must all take responsibility for staying alert and staying sober and for building the policy guardrails that will keep us out of the ditch. Technology belongs to all of us. Our society must be alert to the risks posed by AI, but there is no time to be afraid. The nations and the institutions that act now to shape the future of AI will help shape the future for us all. And I'm immensely grateful to join you in this work. I have the highest aspirations for what we can all achieve working together. So let's get started. With that, it's now my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, the Chairman and CEO of INRIA, Dr. Bruno Sportis. Thanks, Professor Wright. Good morning, Monsieur le Ministre, cher Jean-Noël Barraud. Ce sont les saluts protocolaires en France. Cher Antoine, cher Laurence, cher Renaud, I am Bruno Sportis, the CEO and Chairman of INRIA, the National French Institute for Digital Science and Technology, and it's really a great honor for me to be there for this event. I first want to thank the organizers of the event, namely um, MIT France, uh, with uh, its uh, director, the director of the board, Patrick Jaillet, the Office for Science and Technology of the French Embassy in the US, uh, with the support of the uh, Consulate, General Consulate of France in Boston. AI, as it, as it had been said by uh, the minister, is a key priority in France, and you know that this symposium uh, is uh, not only in honor of the 20th anniversary of the, the MIT France Seed Fund program, but is also dedicated to AI. And INRIA, as a, the organization in charge of the coordination of the National AI Research Program, is very proud to be involved in this uh, event. Uh, four years ago, in 2018, not far from here, in a conference room, in a larger conference room at Collège de France, uh, President uh, Emmanuel Macron launched the so-called uh, National uh, Strategy for Artificial Intelligence, AI for Humanity, that uh, followed uh, a report written by Cédric Villani, one uh, of the outstanding uh, researchers, French researchers in mathematics, and then uh, MP, member of the parliament. And uh, INRIA was then mandated to coordinate uh, this research program in support of uh, the interministerial coordination and I want to comment, I want to prize uh, the, the works achieved successively, first by Bertrand Payès and then by Renaud Vedel. By the way, a nice new job, Renaud, at the head of the coordination. The ambition was to reinforce the digital sovereignty of France, and the first priority was to be able to provide the tools to train, to attract, to retain our talents, our scientific talents in AI, and then a holistic program, which is quite unusual in France, encompassing a wide range of actions, was set up. 
four cross-disciplinary uh, institutes for artificial intelligence. This has something to do with what Professor Reif uh, has described, I think. We are established in Toulouse, Grenoble, Nice-Sophiantipolis, Paris, in order to reinforce the development of our key research universities at the core of the French digital ecosystems. And with other institutes in Saclay, in Paris, not far from here, at Sorbonne University, they constitute the so-called uh, French AI network with the ambition to develop AI skills at all levels. And, but there were a lot of uh, other actions in order to achieve this ambition. More about 200 chairs for research and education were funded. More than 500 PhDs were funded also at the core of AI. One of our uh, public supercomputers, the so-called uh, Jean Zé supercomputer, operated by CNRS and uh, the Grand Equipment National du Calcul Intensif, Intensif, was upgraded in order to with dedicated units in order to. Uh, host uh, with, for the specific purpose sorry, of AI projects, with GPUs, etc., etc. So a scientific research at the highest level without any adjective, fundamental, applied, or basic, in the international competition, namely excellence. Trend skills as well. So these are, of course, the key ingredients, but this is not enough. And that's why, and uh, Jean-Noël Barraud uh, has uh, said that also, a second phase was announced in November 2021 with a new focus. First, innovation and uh, economic impact, and second, the massive training of skills. Of course, MIT and its ecosystem know what innovation means. Not only academic excellence, but also the ability, and you have said that, uh, Professor Rifle, the, the ability to bridge the gap between companies and academia, to be entrepreneur friendly with the creation of a deep tech startup companies stemming out from academia, the ability to take risks, to invest also in, uh, into the open ecosystems of developers, researchers, companies, the infrastructures of the digital economy. And this is not only a question of money. This is a question of mindset following the guidelines of uh, Professor Susan Berger, a uh, professor at MIT, in a report for the French government five years ago, six years ago, devoted to our innovation policy. Uh, this is uh, surprisingly a bad translation of her French report. Sorry for the English translation, OK? Uh, sorry for her. A report of MIT in December 2015 was devoted to the impact of MIT alumni in the economy. 22% among them have worked in a startup company, which resulted in the creation of 30,000 companies still alive, with more than 4.5 million jobs, generating a turnover of about $2 trillion in 2014. This corresponds to the 10th GDP worldwide. So we have still a lot of things to learn from uh, the MIT ecosystem and from uh, this uh, mindset. And my conviction is that we should drastically revamp our innovation policy in order to achieve such results in France and in Europe, especially with the acceleration related to AI. In one decade, even if we have changed many things, we have still a lot of work to do in front of us, to build bridges, to think about impact and not about funding, to give a major role to universities, which are at the core of the system, to understand why the startup economy is efficient. Briefly speaking, to change our mindset and our tools of public policy for execution. Of course, AI, whatever that means, and this has been also said, is not only a question of skills, research, and innovation. It's also a major game changer for our society, and this raises many fundamental issues about the society we want to build. And that's why the so-called GEPAL, the General Partnership for Artificial Intelligence, was launched in 2018, both by President Macron and by Prime uh, Justin Trudeau, 
This is an international multi-stakeholder initiative to guide the development of responsible use of AI with the ambition of building a network similar to IPCC in climate change, but in this case for AI. And the GPI was uh, launched uh, in practice in June 2020 and now gave us more than 25 countries. France is the current chair of GPI with Renaud Vedel, and while Japan is the incoming chair. And GPI is supported by two centers of expertise, one based in Paris and is operated by uh, INRIA, and the other in Montreal, and with a secretariat hosted by the OECD in Paris. The 2021 summit uh, was held in November in Paris, organized by INRIA, with many researchers uh, in the room, sorry, who were attending this uh, summit as well. That was the opportunity to bridge the gap between theory and theory and practice, to go ahead in the definition of good uh, practice, of good guidelines for the public policies for AI, and I think that there are a lot of similarities with the MIT Schwarzmatt College of Computing. And I think that this is also a strategic issue uh, in, this time, in these times of AI Act of digital regulation in, uh, in Europe. I want to conclude about the collaboration between MIT and INRIA. Our both organizations share the same values for sure, excellence in research, the ambition of impact and of innovation in a modern vision of innovation. For a long time, there have been a lot, many research collaboration with, uh, for instance, the MIT Computer Science and the uh, Artificial AI Lab, aided by Professor Daniela Roos, hi Daniela, but also with uh, other organizations of MIT, such as the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard, the MIT Schwarzman College of Computing, or the MIT Media Lab, to name a few. And that's why MIT is, uh, not surprisingly, uh, in the top five of the US organizations, uh, sometimes it ranks first, okay, uh, having joint publications with INRIA. And some of these uh, INRIA MIT joint pro programs, projects, uh, have also received the support of the MIT France SITFED program. MIT and INRIA are also involved in other key initiatives, namely, and this has been mentioned by the Minister, the World Wide Web Consortium, a key backbone of uh, the digital society and of the digital economy with the uh, initial ambition of Sir Tim Berners-Lee, now professor at MIT, to build a digital infrastructure for the sake of humanity. And in, 20, in 1995, INRIA was the funding member of WCC in Europe, while the W3C was created in MIT one year ago, one year before, sorry. And MIT and INRIA are still strongly involved in the W3C governance, and I hope, and the, the vibrant European web ecosystem hopes that we will be able to maintain this strong link in the forthcoming period for the development of W3C, because this is a question of multilateral governance of the web and of the digital economy. And JPI and W3C, for me, are not so far. The place where we can build on a good scientific basis the future of our technological society. To conclude, I am confident that this symposium will strengthen the collaborations between uh, MIT and French actors, including uh, INRIA, INEI, and beyond. And I am now supposed to uh, introduce my friend and colleague, Antoine Petit, CEO and Chairman of CNRS. Antoine, the floor is yours. Monsieur le ministre, cher Jean-Noël Barré, monsieur le consul général, cher Arnaud Montré, dear Professor Reif, president of MIT, cher Bruno, PDG du, de l'INREA, cher Laurence Piketty, administratif délégué adjoint, adjoint pardon, du CEA, cher Suzanne Berger, cher Jean-Pierre Bourguignon, cher Renaud Védel, on manie tout de la stratégie nationale. Dear friends and colleagues, 
AI is the latest of the deep change brought to our societies by digital sciences and technologies since the second half of 20th century, probably after the computer itself, of course, but also the internet already mentioned. AI relies heavily on the availability of large data sets related to almost all human activities, from health to education to business and science. It leverages the re recent conceptual and practical advances in the domain of machine learning and accelerated computing hardware devices. However, despite recent successes in the field, today's most powerful algorithms, uh, deep neural networks to name them, face many challenges and suffer serious shortcomings that call into question their deployment in sensitive and critical areas with a high societal impact. These shortcomings and challenges include information leakage and privacy preservation, social biases in training data, lack of explainability, accountability, or robustness, but also their ecological impact. This raises questions about the social responsibility of these algorithms and, more profoundly, about the future we are helping to shape. As a CEO of a large multidisciplinary fundamental research institution, CNRS, I am firm firmly convinced that AI should not be reduced to its technological aspects alone and left to companies, engineers, and computer scientists, and I am myself a computer scientist, or I was. Given its profound impact, it is key to address AI from an holistic standpoint. Indeed, all sciences, including humanities and social sciences, are either being impacted, if not reshaped by AI, but also offer new opportunities then can contribute to the understanding of the possible consequences of AI and ultimately improve the design of tools built from AI. Scientific organizations like CNRS have a great responsibility to help policymakers and public opinion understand the implications, benefits, and also possible risk of AI. In France, and as in many other countries in the world, the stakes behind AI appear sufficiently high to have sparked national support policies, regulatory efforts, prospective works, and in France, already mentioned by Bruno, it started in 2018 with the launch of the national AI strategy by President Macron. As the premier scientific organization in France, CNRS has, of course, been involved together with our partners, INRIA, CEA, but also French universities in this effort in the context of the national strategy. CNRS has been, in particular, involved in several very uh, practical actions, like AI shares, participation to the four selected interdisciplinary institute for AI, Troisia, or actions to attract the best talents to fr in France in a fierce international competition, including, and this is quite new, large companies. CNRS operates also the Jean Zay National Supercomputer for AI, which has become, become one of the most powerful computing facilities freely accessible in Europe for public AI research. CNRS is also coordinating with its partners, CEA and INRIA, the new so-called PEPR, Programme Equipment Prioritaire de Recherche, in AI, a fundamental research program to further advance the new French AI strategy oriented towards reliable, embedded, and decentralized AI. At the international level, CNRS, with its partners, is creating the conditions to support our researchers working with their colleagues. As an example, we recently opened an international lab on AI in Montreal with McGill University 
and the famous MILA, Montreal Institute for Learning Algorithms. And I see in today's program that the director of this lab, Pablo Cantalada, will be speaking about his research later. I don't know where it's Pablo, somewhere uh, here. Um, two months ago, ago, previously two months ago, I, I was in Australia uh, to open a, an international lab on topics strongly also related to AI, but including also uh, social sciences. In the US, Ceneris has developed such, in, has developed, sorry, five of such international labs in ecology, epidemiology, astrophysics, engineering sciences, and chemistry. So as you see, none yet in AI, but there is room for more and new projects in this topic. For Ceneris, international collaboration as celebrated today is in our DNA. The best research has to be undertaken with the best labs and researchers wherever they are. As an institution, we have to make our best for these collaborations to happen in brief where and when there is an opportunity to combine our institution's strengths to develop high-level labs. CNRS is willing and capable to do so. Regarding the US and MIT in particular, no doubt that MIT is one of the CNRS major partners in many disciplines, including AI. MIT is indeed CNRS third US partner in terms of co-publication, almost 1,000 every year, in many disciplines from social sciences and humanities to energy and material sciences. In fact, half of the, funded, uh, of the project funded through the France MIT funds are uh, benefiting, benefiting sorry, to CNRS Labs, and this program is an excellent tool for fostering our collaborations. Today, the few CNRS-funded projects we share with MIT have been starting with the support from the MIT France program, and we are happy to be celebrating today 20 years of such amazing program. As you might recall, last December, the authorities of both our countries, France and US, organized a joint committee meeting on science and technology in Washington, in Washington DC. And with no surprise, AI was one of the high priority thematic both countries decided to put their efforts on. I then consider that today and tomorrow's symposium is among the results of last year's conclusions with, of course, great satisfaction. In the context of today's event, celebrating fruitful international collaborations, I would like to focus on one of the most emblematic actions of the CNRS in the field of AI, which is the launch of its new interdisciplinary center, AI for Science and Sciences for AI. As I said before, AI is transforming our societies, but AI as a knowledge discovery paradigm is impacting the way research is produced across disciplines. AI methods, in particular, of course, machine learning, represent today an important challenge to modeling increasingly complex and multi-scale systems, as well as exploiting the massive increase of, in flows, volumes, and diversity of multi-source data from large instruments, observation system, experimental platforms, and the Internet of Things. They lead to new research practices whose levels of maturity and organization varies greatly from one discipline to another and to new needs in terms of expertise and international collaboration. Within the CNRS, AI methods are now being deployed very rapidly in the context of major research infrastructures and national in international experimental platforms that the CNRS supports or to which it contributes, for instance, in biology, high energy physics, climate modeling, to give just some examples. Within the different disciplines, the dynamics around AI has given rise to numerous initiatives, in particular within the framework of national working groups supported by CNRS 
such as those on statistical ecology, theory of climate, material sciences, which aims to bring together the community of AI theorists, if I can say, mathematicians, physicists, computer scientists, machine learners, and specialists of the field of application. We also pay a special attention to the participation of colleagues from humanities and social sciences. Of course, these colleagues will use AI techniques for their own research, but they are also instrumental if we want to take into account the questions of acceptability, equity, or ethics. Drawing our, uh, on our multidisciplinary experience and proven organization, the very aim of this center, AI Source for Science, Sciences for AI, is to foster dialogue between disciplines to address new scientific questions and to establish rapidly new modes of collaboration between sciences. Several thematic semester are already programmed, statistical physics and machine learning, astrophysics and machine learning, causal learning and inferences. Others are to come, and the call for fellows and visiting researchers will be launched soon. The center will also organize training sessions, host multidisciplinary teams, and act as a project's hotel. Our institutions share the desire, the commitment, I would say, to advance knowledge for the benefits of human beings, especially through scientific and technological advances. The collaborations between our institutions in the framework of these centers seems relevant and our side very welcome. To finish, I would like to thank the organizers, organizers for inviting me to give you a short presentation of where CNRS uh, stands today in terms of AI development, and of course to welcome very warmly our friends and colleagues from the MIT to France. Thank you very much, and I invite now Laurence Piketty to say some words for CERA. Thank you very much, Antoine. So, dear all, uh, good morning. Uh, I would like to thank the Scientific and Technology Unit of the French Embassy in the USA, the French General Consula in Boston, the MIT and in RIA, for the organization of this symposium on artificial intelligence on the occasion of the 20th anniversary of the France MIT program. I'm very pleased to be here today as here as numerous fruitful collaborations with MIT, especially in the fields of digital technologies and their uses, as well as on low, and, um, low carbon energies. And to have the opportunity to share with you some information regarding CA's involvement in the artificial intelligence acceleration strategy. First, I would like to say a few words on CA's mission and activities as they nurture our vision about artificial intelligence, the benefits it can bring to humanity, and the concerns raised by its development and which have to be tackled. As a research and technology organization, CA conducts a wide range of uh, R&D programs from fundamental research to industrial uh, innovation. The combination of our expertises and technological platforms, as well as our close relations with academic and industrial partners, makes CA a case support to three major current transitions, energy and climate, digital, health and medicine, and to security and defense. AI is a strategic topic for CA as it leads to the development of rich and impressive innovations for both missions of CA on advancing science and on support to the industry for the benefits of society. CA is a key player in artificial intelligence with more than 400 people working on and pushing forward the frontier in both technological and fundamental research. 
In particular, in particular, AI is, is the heart of fundamental research is applied namely to climate change, where AI is used by CES Lab to offer new and more precise modeling and prediction tools. Neuroimaging, where AI offers new prospects for personalized medicine, both for early diagnosis and for the prognosis of response to treatment. This is illustrated by major achievements, such as winning the second place in the International Brain Fast Magnetic Resonance Imaging Challenge competition, organized by Facebook AI Research and NYU Langoni Health. This year, researchers develop a high-performance neural network to produce images of similar quality in a shorter examination time. AI is also pushing synergies between fundamental research areas such as astrophysics and neurosciences, jointly working on imaging recognition, or between fundamental mathematics and climate modeling, or to accelerate simulation of complex systems in the domain of low carbon energies, or for material sciences, as well as high performance computing. AI research activities conducted by CA on these topics are supported by, by large H, HPC computing and simulation infrastructure and strong collaboration with industrial partners as Atto, Sanofi, Siemens, Meteo France, EDF, or Total Energies. The strong and durable links we built with our industrial and academic partners within Europe, USA, and Japan will be the key to our new scientific, scientific discoveries. For CEA, the first condition for a massive deployment of AI is to ensure quality, safety, and security in order to gain the confidence of users. <laughs> Further, reducing the environmental footprint of its use and offering data protection are driver for the development of local data computing and thus uh, for the deployment of embedded uh, AA solutions. These challenges uh, trigger important uh, fundamental and technological researches. CA has launched ambitious internal programs for trustworthy AI and embedded AI, AI impact related to privacy, ethics, and future of work. It focuses uh, its efforts on several, uh, several areas, such as algorithms from data to technology for frugality and confidence per design, formalization, uncertainty, and qualification for performance and truth characterization, circuit architecture, components and technologies offering performance and low energy consumption for embedded uses. These programs are extended through national and European cooperation as the Confiance AI program, where CA is a key structuring partner with more than 30 CA researchers involved, working with French large companies such as Renault, Valeo, Airbus, Safran, and Thales. These topics are at the heart of the national AI acceleration strategy, in particular for its phase two, which places particular emphasis on the embedded frugal and trust aspect. Uh, as my colleague uh, said, uh, CA is involved in the strategy for fundamental research by colliding with CNRS and NREA, the ambitious uh, national plan, plan PPRA uh, for fundamental research and this topic, but also with, with large investment on research and technologies from algorithms to AI accelerators. CA is indeed also active on the development of hardware for HAA. That research is conducted 
Internally, but also via industrial cooperation in microelectronics with large companies such as ST Microelectronics and with startups such, such as Dolphin. Recently, CA gained the large European private investment project for setting up testing and experimentation facilities of microelectronics technologies in AI. This equipment is to be completed by the development of a national tooling platform for the efficient uh, and optimized development of deep learning embedded applications, the Deep Green Open Source Tool Platform, which should be launched this autumn. As a conclusion, I would say that innovation lies at the heart of academic and industrial competitiveness and international cooperation is mandatory to facilitate and accelerate the innovation process. We actually need collaboration and cooperation today more than ever because of the complexity of the problems and the global impact they have. MIT France collaboration is crucial in creating and steering innovation in key areas such as artificial intelligence and more generally for sustainable digital transition. So thank you for your time.